teacher for Arts for the Schools. We are a nonprofit that provides art education for over 10,000 local students in the Tahoe area every year. We are really excited to bring you some visual art classes during this break. The lesson that we're going to work on today is called Right to the Point. It's a combination of Aboriginal art and writing. Here is an example of what your artwork will look like at the end. The Aboriginal people use symbols in their artwork to tell a story. Some of the symbols um, are very prevalent here. Here is a, a symbol that represents a campfire or a gathering, and these are little witchetty grubs. The technique that we use is called pointillism, and it's a series of dots that create an overall texture and pattern within our piece. The materials that we need to use are as follows. We'll need some white paper, some black paper, or colored paper if you don't have black. We'll need to have a set of paints. We'd like to use some primary colors of yellow, red, blue, secondary colors of green, orange, and purple, as well as white. Some other things that you're going to need are Q-tips to create all of those little dots that you see here. I need to take a moment to set up so you can go ahead and take some time to set up as well. This would be a great time for you to pause the video and go gather some materials for our project. Let's learn a little bit about the background about this project. So Aboriginal art was used by the native people in Australia to tell the stories about their past. It is one of the oldest art forms that is still made today. They always used colors that they found in nature. Here is a picture of some Aboriginal children who are actually decorated with similar artwork to the pointillism that we're going to be creating. And if you're wondering, where is Australia? Well, it's way down here. They even say it's down under. Some of the symbols that are used in the artwork across the board are drawn here on this chart. So we have people sitting, which is a circular form with some half circles around. We have some animal tracks, a sand hill, rain, spears, water holes with running water. This is a symbol for a woman and this is the symbol for a man. Here is a witchetty grub, which is actually a grub that the Aboriginal people eat, and so do some of the animals around there. Here's a hunting boomerang, water holes with tracks between. This is a goanna, which actually shows what his track looks like when he walks along the sand. This is a campfire or a water hole, a kuleman, a kulaman is used for carrying water, and these are some kangaroo tracks. So let's take a look at a simple piece drawn by an Aboriginal person, and let's see if we can read it. So here is a piece, and you can see it only has two colors. It does have a few different symbols, though. When I look at this piece, the thing that sticks out the most to me are these three large circles. So let's look over here and see what those mean. Well, I can see the circles here, and it says campsite or water hole. So it looks like these might be three separate water holes. <clears throat> and 
If we look closer, we can see the actual symbol right here. So it is a water hole with tracks in between. It doesn't really say if it's people tracks or animal tracks. We just know that it's some kind of tracks. If we look closer, we see that there's these shapes, which are the kulemans, and that there are two women sitting across from each other. So possibly, the women have come to the watering hole to fill up their kulemans and then to take a break next to a campfire. <clears throat> so that's just a very simple story, but it tells us a lot about the lives of Aboriginal people. They couldn't just go to their faucet and turn on water. They had to travel and have something to carry their water in. Okay, so let's grab our symbol chart so that we can make our sketch. For my piece, I am going to start with some men and women sitting near a campfire or a water hole. It's important that you make your sketches big enough so that when you start to add the dots, you have plenty of room to do that. So I have so far one man here, one man here, and I'm going to add some women around this campfire. I also want to add a tracks with a water hole and some kulamans as well as some hunting equipment such as boomerang or spears. I'm just going to add a few kulimans for these people and maybe this man has some spears and this man over here has a boomerang. I'm going to add the water hole on this side to create some balance in my piece. It also gives it a border over here. And notice how I'm not very worried about how precise my drawing is because this is just a sketch. I'm also going to put a separation between where the people are and where the water hole is because I want to make some action happen in my story as well. So here I am drawing my sand hill, which kind of separates the humans from the water hole. A lot of the Aboriginal pieces are separated into sections and I'm going to use the Goana track to section off of my piece. I also really like the way that witchetty grubs look so I'm going to add some of them to my piece as well. You want to make sure that you're picking symbols that you really would like to use, but also remember not to pick too many symbols because we have a lot of dots to add. Okay, now that we have our sketch complete, we're going to set it aside for a minute and think about what colors we'd like to use in our painting. We are going to use complementary color sets in our painting today to ensure that our symbols will definitely stick out from the background. When you're using the technique of pointillism, it's really easy to get lost and not be able to see what you're creating. So we want to make sure that we're able to see. 
Right now I'm going to just show you the sets of complementary colors. The first set is red. And its complement is green. The second set of complementary colors is blue. and orange. And the last complementary color set we have is yellow and its complement of purple. So let's say that we wanted to make our sand hill yellow, then the background would be mainly purple. Or let's say that we really wanted our humans to be red, so our background would then be green. <clears throat> okay, now that we have our sketch done and we understand complementary colors, it's time to start working on our final piece. Make sure to keep some extra Q-tips around in case they get too full of paint so that you can just grab a new Q-tip and continue on with your work. So the very next step is to transfer our sketch. And we are going to sketch, transfer it to our sketch, our black <laughs> final paper. When you're transferring, it's important to think about what could I improve here? The things that I'm going to try to improve are I'm going to make my wishy grubs a little larger. I'm also going to try to simplify this circle. I feel like there's too many circles here and these spears are very small, so I'd like to enlarge them. As you're looking at your sketch, just take a minute and try to think, how could I make this look a little more simple and a little more easy to read? So as you can see, I had a very complicated circle and I've changed it into a more simplified circle. Take your time while transferring and the more time you take, the more clear your picture is going to turn out. And I almost forgot my sand till. <laughs> Make sure you have all the details that you want to include so that you don't forget about them when adding all of those dots. Okay, 
my, pe my piece is now transferred onto my paper, and we want to start with the symbols first. A lot of times in these paintings, the artist likes to use white. So if you can see here, a lot of the symbols are outlined or have some white incorporated into them. It really helps it to stand out from the background. This artist did not use a lot of complementary colors, but you will see what that looks like in my piece. <clears throat> so as you look here, you can see that I've used red for my Goana track and then green in the background. Down here I've used yellow for the people and purple in the background. And you can notice that the white really stands out the best. <clears throat> so it's time to get painting. I'm going to start with my white paint to ensure that these important symbols in my story really stand out. So when placing the dots on the paper, you want to make sure that you have enough paint on your Q-tip. And the more paint that you can build up, the better the piece turns out. It gives it a very nice texture. So about every two or three dots, I need to re-dip my Q-tip. And if you seem to have ones that aren't showing up, you can always go back and add more. It's actually very calming and soothing to take your time and add these perfect little dots all over your paper. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need a little break. Each Q-tip can stay in the paint. It lays nicely on top and it doesn't get very messy. I'm going to change colors now just so you can see how different paints are showing up on the paper. White shows up really well. Well, yellow gets a little washed out. So you may have to go back and do a, a few extra layers on the yellow. Oops. Can't forget that this is my man. If you need to refer to the, sim the symbol chart, feel free to do that at any time. It takes years for these people to memorize these charts. You can also make your um, men and women a little larger by adding another row of dots. Okay, let's try to use another set of complementary colors. I'm going to go over here to my water hole and tracks and I'm going to use blue and orange. Since it's water, I'm going to use the blue for the water. And you can kind of try to make the dots bigger or smaller than the previous dots that you've used. It's a fun way to explore how much diversity you can get out of a Q-tip. So again, I'm only going to do a small section just as an example for you so you know what we're looking for here. So I have my blue. Now I'm going to add some orange. And you can see how it's going to help our blue to really stand out from the background. Just a few more dots. I'm just applying a little bit more blue paint just to make that really nice dot texture 
and to make sure that my colors are really vibrant and standing out from my paper. So now you can see what a nice color combination that is. And I have the beginning of my water hole and tracks. The next thing I'd like to show you is the Witchetty Grub. It's a little bit different. Hopefully you remember from our past, from the um, drawings that I showed you that there was other animals and the Witchetty Grubs were painted in a little differently. So you can kind of use the Q-tip like a, a paintbrush and just go ahead and fill in those little grubs. Um, being careful to try to stay in the lines that you've created. Also, leaving some black space between the sections of the grub will help it to stay a grub and not turn into a big white blob. I'm just going to do a couple more. So now you can see that I have these really nice um, round shapes that look like little grubs. There, one last thing I would like to show you is that once your paints have dried in different sections here, you can go back in with some white and just add a little more detail and it really helps your painting to come together. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to my goanna. And then I will show you what that looks like. So here I added some white and it really starts to bring the whole section together. Okay kids, your finished art piece should look like this. Remember to make sure to cover your whole paper with all those dots and make sure to incorporate those complementary color sets. Now go ahead and continue your pointillism dots and you can even do another painting with your own story. Thank you so much for joining us today. And don't forget, we're a nonprofit based organization. So if you'd like to donate, look for the links at the end of this video. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.